Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni and this is Probability and Statistics. Today we're going to be covering the multiplication rule. Now this is just a statistical and probability rule that allows us to find the probability of multiple events happening at the same time. So we've learned in the past some basic probability of how to just find the odds or chances of something happening. But what if I have multiple things happening and I want to find the probability of all of them happening in a specific way? That's what the multiplication rule is going to be covering, and that's what we're looking at today. So I'm hoping that you're not going to find it a surprise that the multiplication rule just tells us that if we have two events, we're able to multiply those two probabilities together to get the final probability. But it does get a little bit more complex than that. For example, here you can see our general form of the multiplication rule, and it says that the probability that two events, A and B, will occur in sequence is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So why is it more complex than just saying multiply them together? Well, here's the deal. When you have two, two different things happening, sometimes you gotta keep in mind that the first thing may change the probability of the second. All right, so we can't just say multiply together A and B, the two probabilities. What we have to say is, all right, take the probability of A and multiply it by the probability of B, given the fact that A has happened. So for example, if I'm drawing cards, maybe I'm saying what's the probability of drawing two kings in a row? Well, yeah, that first king is going to be 4 over 52. That's the probability of drawing a king. But the second king, if I don't put that card back, the probability is no longer 4 over 52. Now I'm holding a king in my hand, so there's only three left. And instead of being 52 cards in the deck, there's only going to be 51. So because of that, our probability of B has changed. And that's what we have to show in our formula. This is why the word sequence is so important here, because it's telling us that A happens first and then B, which is why we have to do all of this work with the fact of what is happening to B now that A has happened first. Now, there is a less general form of this rule, and it's when we're dealing with A and B being independent. Why is that? Because remember, independent means that one has no effect on the other. So in that case, we don't have to worry about the probability of B changing. It will be exactly the same. We will have our probability of A, we'll have our probability of B, and both of those are going to be what they were originally. So we can just multiply them together and call it a day, but that is only if they are independent. Another thing to keep in mind here is that it says that this can be extended for any number of independent events. So, for example, if I have three different events, A, B, and C, we are able to use these formulas to say, okay, well then let's take the probability of A times B times the probability of C, given the one, fact that the other ones have occurred before it. So you can extend both of these formulas on and on and on for as many events as you need. Now, honestly, I could stop right there, but I really feel like the multiplication rule is driven home if I show you some examples. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to, have to show you a few applications of the multiplication rule. And if you stick with me to the end, you're going to see some really tricky ways to apply the multiplication rule to real life situations. So we're going to start off with a basic example similar to what we looked at before. We're talking about drawing two cards from a deck. The first one, we want to know the probability of drawing a king. And then once we are holding the king in our hand, we want to find the probability of drawing a queen. So what I'm going to do here is start off by saying, what is the probability of drawing a king? Well, we know that there are four kings in a deck and a total of 52 cards. So the probability of drawing a king is 4 over 52. Now, the probability of drawing a queen is also 4 over 52. But here's the kicker. We already have a king in our hand. So instead of saying it's 4 over 52, we now only have 51 cards left in the deck. But at the end of the day, we are still just using the multiplication rule. So once we know each of these individual probabilities, we can just multiply them together to find the final probability of this occurring. If you use a calculator or by hand and do this multiplication, you will find out that the probability of getting a king and then a queen is going to be 4 over 663 based off of multiplying straight across and reducing your fraction.
The second example we have here is actually an application of our independent version of the multiplication rule. It says here, find the probability of getting ahead and then rolling a six. Well, guess what? Rolling a die and flipping a coin have no effect on each other. So one will not change the probability of the other, which means I just have to find the probability of each one of these and then multiply them together. So what's the probability of flipping a head? That's going to be one over two. And what's the probability of rolling a six on a six-sided die? There is only one six out of the six sides of that die. So when we multiply those together, we do end up just getting one over 12 as the final probability of getting both of those things to occur in sequence. All right, let's move on to something a bit more real life applicable. If you are told that any particular knee surgery has about an 85% chance of success, also known as the decimal 0.85, then find the probability that three knee surgeries in a row are successful. So we are looking at three different situations here, and the probability of success for each one is 0.85, all right? So if we go through doing that, we still just use the multiplication rule all the way through. And in this case, we would probably consider these surgeries to be independent of each other. Just because one person is successful does not change the probability that a different surgery would be successful as well. So we're going to keep it as 0.85 all the way through and apply this using the independent version of the formula. Now, if you do go ahead and multiply those out, you will find out that you get about 0.61 or 61% chance that all three of these surgeries will go well. Let's start looking at the tricky situations. So in this case, it says find the probability that none of the three knee surgeries are successful. Well, guess what? We have three situations here, but they don't want to deal with the 0.85 because that's our chance of success. Well, by using the complement rule, we can say that one minus our probability of success is going to give us our probability of failure. So in this case, the probability of failure is going to be 0.15. So what's the probability that none of these are successful? Well, that would be the same thing as saying what's the probability that they are all unsuccessful. So that would just be 0.15 times itself, three times based off the same independence rule as earlier. And if you multiply those together, that's going to give you about 0.003375, or in other words, a 0.3% chance if I round. Now, that's good news for us because that means there's a less than 1% chance that this doctor is going to mess up all three of the surgeries. And finally, this last one is a doozy, but one that they love throwing on standardized tests because it can completely throw you off. It says, find the probability that at least one of these three knee surgeries is successful. That means that if we're looking at the three different surgeries, we would okay, be okay with just one of them being successful. And that means the other two could fail. But here's the problem here. We could also say, all right, well, maybe there are two successes and a fail. Well, guess what? That is still at least one, so that would work. And in fact, saying that all of them are successful is okay as well. And because we're doing them in order of the first, second, and third surgery, we could actually mix up a bunch of different combinations here and say that maybe the first one was a fail, then a success, then a fail. And you can continue listing all of those ways out. That would take you quite a long time because you would have to find the probability by multiplying each of these probabilities together and then adding all of these total probabilities to get your final answer for this question, which is why I said that this one is tricky. But instead, there is a little shortcut we can take here. By instead looking at the complement rule, we can say, all right, at least one surgery is successful. Well, the only way that that would not happen is if they all failed. That is the only way. All of them failing is the only way that this would not have at least one success. And we know that probability. We just found it in the last example. It was 0.003 which means if I'm going to be trying to find the probability of at least one, I can just do one minus the 0 0.003 
And that's going to give me 0.997 as my answer. In other words, there is a 99.7% chance that at least one of these surgeries will be successful. Obviously, that's a really go around way of answering the question, but doing one minus the previous answer would be a lot faster than finding all of these probabilities and adding them up. So in summary, looking back at what we've done so far today, we have looked at the general form of the multiplication rule, but we also went through and talked about the independent version of that multiplication rule. It's pretty easy to use, but you can see as we got into those later examples, how you can actually apply this to some pretty tricky situations to make your life a lot easier in your end game. So with that said, if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and click the like button to help me out. And if you want to keep getting videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel to see my weekly videos on math, ACT, probability and statistics, and whatever else you can think of. Remember, my name is Daniel Caproni, and this has been Probability and Statistics.